of moving big data. Let's see more uh, what what is what is that. So uh, if we take this picture again, uh, we see uh, instead of focusing on this backend data center which is sitting in the cloud as the processing and as the analytics and uh, let's let's move uh, the processing resources to the edge and that's not a concept uh, which comes uh, like that there are a lot of uh, analysis and analytics which uh, and forecast which says that by year 2018 40 percent of the iot created data would be stored processed analyzed and acted upon closest to or at the edge of the network so uh, move uh, processing and storage to the edge of the network is, is a very promising trend uh, which is being uh, highly uh, discussed. A lot of uh, standardization bodies right now are created and are working with, on that, like the Open Fog Consortium, which is recently constituted uh, to consider uh, IoT Fog solutions. We we'll talk more on that. And there is also the Mobile Edge Compute. Uh, we we'll talk more on that in the coming slides, which is uh, being uh, discussed within the HC uh, European Telecommunication Standard Institute uh, and uh, industry specification groups. They are speaking about and standardizing the mobile edge compute. So uh, that's a current trend and is very useful for IoT. Uh, if we look at uh, network infrastructure uh, tenets for IoT in 5G, if we look at 5G, which is uh, the future and which is expected by year 2020, uh, 5G is talking about uh, network uh, functions, uh, about aggregation, about data aggregation at the network edge, and uh, is, is considering IoT as a specific use case and how to prepare for network infrastructure that matches the IoT requirements. So uh, in, in, in the coming generation of networks like 5G networks or even 4.5 uh, generation, we have diversity of communication technology coming from IoT and uh, diversity of traffic because IoT comes not only with diversity of communication technology from the billion of connected devices, but the traffic itself is, is diverse. Traffic can be three bytes of data coming from smart metering, for example, and can reach uh, several uh, a big volume of data coming from video surveillance. So there is there is this kind of diverse nature of traffic. So uh, IoT traffic aggregation at different level of, in the network is required. We cannot deal with this whole uh, volume of traffic. Uh, through bypassing all this traffic constantly all the time to the cloud. There is a need for a different level of ag aggregation in the network. Uh, so this uh, requires cloud migration to the network edge and more, cl more closure to data sources instead of counting on only on the cloud at, at the, at the back-end data center, this uh, is being migrated now to the network edge to, to create a kind of cluster of compute and storage resources uh, like uh, and, and, the, and the components that constitute the clusters of compute and storage resources can be IoT gateways, can be fog elements, I, I'll, I'll, I'll explain more on that, can be mobile edge compute servers, I'll explain more on that. This, this gives an opportunity uh, not only to uh, offload the network resources but uh, to the edge, but also to monetize new hardware and new software uh, and new devices management and, and also resources orchestration at the edge cloud. So there will, this, this will create new business model. Operators will have uh, a new monetization means. Uh, if we have an idea on cloud migration to the edge and uh, and the why for cloud migration to the edge, uh, there are several reasons. Uh, we have uh, much lower bandwidth and cost uh, will be needed. Uh, Availability anywhere and any time, meaning if 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 the data coming from IoT devices uh, talks with an edge device, it can reach this edge device easier and anywhere and any time uh, than uh, waiting to communicate with the back end cloud. For real time functionality, this will ensure better 
latency, also uh, easier adoption of new technologies, meaning what if there, if there, if there are new technologies, uh, it, it's easy to adopt these new technologies on edge devices than to do it on the back end data center, uh, on heavy devices. Uh, edge devices are uh, smaller devices. Uh, they can be replaced easily. They can be uh, expanded easier. Uh, if we look at this uh, figure, uh, that gives a cost idea uh, on a solution uh, based on cloud only. That's for three years cost and based on edge plus cloud. We see a huge amount of saving, which, which results from using the edge plus cloud uh, instead of cloud only, which, which is a tempting uh, approach, of course. Uh, what is a flagship application for uh, for edge processing? It's video. Uh, that's that's really uh, a flagship application. Uh, we, we can see that video uh, in IoT is uh, exploding as as the connected uh, devices are exploding and reaching billions uh, of devices. Uh, video traffic also is exploding, and there are a lot of uh, expectations uh, by analysts. Uh, on the huge on huge numbers of connected cameras uh, in the coming years so the forecast is for a total of 129 utabytes uh, of video traffic uh, of traffic generated by 2020 from iot 41 percent of them will come from sensors and 59 percent will come from cameras meaning what meaning that by year 2020 uh, more than half of the IoT traffic will come from cameras. There is also uh, a prediction on the huge increase uh, in the number of IP network cameras uh, in the coming years. So that uh, that image gives an idea on how video and image data uh, are increasing and uh, and how they will become uh, more than half uh, of the total IoT traffic uh, by year 2020. If we look at uh, the top video or vision use cases, we have surveillance. Uh, just for surveillance, we have access control to uh, like uh, face detection or face recognition for giving uh, access control to someone. We have traffic surveillance in roads. We have ADAS, which is uh, in, uh, in vehicles, which is uh, assisted the drivers, advanced driver assisted systems, and we have privacy preserved monitoring. Uh, all these are use cases which uses video and which uses complex uh, processing uh, that requires uh, efficient analytics like face detection, face recognition, face identification, a lot of other uh, features like LBR, license plate recognition for vehicles or OCR, object character recognition for object recognition. So, uh, lo so we look at video from two uh, from two points: not from the heavy traffic generated by video, and also from the heavy processing uh, required for video analytics. And these are just simple examples on the dominant features that we are having in video and vision analytic algorithms. This this. Uh, will show more the need for uh, edge processing, the need for edge analytics. 